So each of these extraordinary women has a profile in the Green Book. They're wonderful to read, describing your remarkable careers and paths. I will skip the formal introductions, especially given that we have so little time. Uh, I do encourage you, however, as you listen to answers and are inspired, uh, please share your thoughts using the hashtag C3EWomen on Twitter. People more broadly can follow what is happening here today. So we're going to take stock of the last five years and look ahead. I'll try to give each of you a chance to give some perspective. Please jump in if you have something to say uh, following uh, one of your colleagues. I think I'll start with Kristen. Uh, you were a 2013 C3E awardee and have been engaged in the C3E program for a few years now. Uh, can you give us a sense of how the program has evolved since you were for, first awarded uh, and what um, uh, your perspective is on where we find ourselves today? Sure. Um, I think it's you know a very exciting, energizing space to be a part of, and there are without a doubt so many amazing women in this room, and we kind of continue to get more women engaged, and that's such a critical, important piece of it all. Um, what I think is more exciting is the future potential around this space, and I feel like we're just at the very tip of, of getting started, and, and by virtue of being in this room, you know, it's a, a limited space, a, a high profile ticket to get your hands on. Um, there are a lot of people that aren't here, uh, and so I think the more people that we can figure out how to engage and connect um, and the more we can talk about and recognize as the voices not in the room, um, the more we can engage people who are already actively doing so much amazing work in places that we don't see. Uh, and telling those stories, I think, is going to be what dramatically changes the conversation around clean energy overall. And of course, for the next generation, one of the best things that C3E has done is launched this website, which is really a social networking platform. And that's how those who are my son's age <laughs> find information, connect with other people. So I really encourage everybody to use, to use that as well. Carla, I'd love to hear from you how you learned about the program um, and what impact uh, you see C3E having at a state level as a commissioner here in California. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I first heard about the program because a female mentor of mine a few years ago sent me an email requesting suggestions for the awards. And it was a good opportunity for me to think about all the fabulous women I know who are working in this space who could take advantage of such an opportunity. Since then, I've come to appreciate, as you've noted, that the awards are just one element of the work that is done, very public element, but there's activities that happen on a regular basis to facilitate networking. For the state of California, what's been great is that we've had a number of Californians recognized uh, by C3E. And when you're in California, due to both our size and location, sometimes we feel a little isolated, like, you know, are people noticing what we're doing in DC? And so I think the opportunity has been great actually for to have California women connected with uh, the rest of the country. Oh, that's very interesting. When we, I certainly see California, maybe it's because I'm a Californian <laughs> of origin. I see California as really leading the way in many respects in terms of clean energy deployment. So very interesting to hear you say we need this as an opportunity to connect with colleagues all around the country and be recognized. Well, I just want to note too, I've noticed a difference in the Department of Energy over the last few years in terms of reaching out to California to engage in forums. And so thank you for your efforts with uh, that. Thank you. Uh, Danelle, very exciting to see you here, and I know that tomorrow you and I are going to be participants in the SEM International Teachers Workshop, where we're gathering SEM teachers, uh, STEM teachers from all around the world to talk about uh, the ways in which we can expand the knowledge pool in STEM among young women in particular. Uh, you've spent time at the Department of Energy as well as an Albert Einstein Distinguished Education, Educator Fellow. And uh, I'm interested in knowing what your perspective is on what thus far has worked best in terms of pushing girls to engage in STEM and how C3E has played a role in promoting that cause. Absolutely. I think the, um, the stories, telling STEM stories of women, uh, young women, older women, diverse women is critically important. So hearing those stories and my advice to you as you tell those stories is to include the challenges and the failures and the struggles that you've had because our students oftentimes hear how incredible it's been and the awesome things that you've done which is important it's an important part of your story but if that's all that they hear 
then when they hit a stumbling block, they think, well, this never happened to another woman. I don't, I don't know about this happening. And it's, so it's important to share the, the failures and the struggles and challenges, even though sometimes that's a hard part to remember ourselves because you want to kind of put them out of your head. But I think that that's really important. And one of the most important things that we can do collectively to um, encourage more um, young women and girls to go into the STEM fields, tell our stories. Do you mean in your stories both professional uh, challenges and uh, triumphs and also personal? I mean, are you encouraging people to talk about how they've juggled Absolutely. life that in addition work -life to work? Absolutely. That work-life balance is critically important to discuss as well, particularly as women, right? Because there's so many things to balance. And in this room, there are a uh, hundred different solutions for how that works. So. Um, sharing that side of it, the personal and professional side, is, is critically important. I agree with you on that, and I certainly see with young women quite often that what they're most interested in knowing is, is how do you manage all the different dimensions of your life. Uh, and I will just note on your point about uh, describing failure as well as success, one of the mantras that I have followed, Bill Perry, the former defense secretary who I mentioned, once said to one of my kids when he had had a catastrophic uh, science fair experiment. He looked him in the eye, and Bill is a noted entrepreneur uh, and scientist, and Bill said, Richard, if you don't fail at first, you weren't trying something bold enough. <laughs> and I think that's such an important message for young people to hear. We're in such a competitive environment right now. They're afraid of failure because they're fearful it won't allow them to advance, but actually in science, you have to be willing to fail. And Absolutely. so helping them hear how failure brought you to a new place is a critical part of the storytelling. Anya, you were recognized for extraordinary work last year uh, with international women. And in particular, I read the uh, story of your work in Nepal after the earthquakes uh, in getting solar lights uh, to remote villages. Tell us about your experience and how C3E plays into your thinking about what we can do to empower women around the world. Sure. Um, well, first of all, it's so inspiring to be able to come here every year and have a room full of talented and inspiring women to talk to and learn from. Um, most of the women that we work with, we consider them ambassadors of clean energy revolution right in their home villages, but none of them have more than a 10th grade education. They don't even know the term STEM. Um, so being able to explain to them that there's a larger coalition of women that are doing similar things to them in their field makes them feel brave enough um, and gives them the capacity to keep going and hope to learn from women in other cultures um, as well. So I think that's incredibly important. And we definitely take the ambassador role that is used here at C3E um, and transfer it into um, our program in Nepal, training women to represent clean energy distribution and deployment in their local villages. Can you think from that experience what we can do to replicate that? Because your personal commitment has been so essential to this success. How do we make this happen in other places around the world? I think. Um, you know, there's a lot of other great programs, and one of the international awardee, uh, Jody, who's here today from Global Cycle Solutions, is doing something similar. I think. Where that, is she? Uh, I don't. Uh -huh. There she is. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of good opportunities, and um, like um, Melanie said, there's women in the developing world are their household energy managers. They are responsible for managing everything, including the shopping, as well as energy, um, using household energy fuels, consuming them, purchasing them. So they're really the ones with their finger on the pulse of what needs to be done um, for the next phase of development for their communities and their families. Um, so in order to replicate programs like the ones that we're doing, I think that um, there's all really good examples out there. You just need to get involved. We are always looking for women to join our team as mentors, as ambassadors, as advisors, um, to help us develop some of the incredible and inspiring work that you all do at, in um, a developing world context. Thank you. So let me just do a time check, because I was told we had about 20 minutes, but someone just splashed two minutes. Where are we realistically? <laughs> Pardon me? A minute and a half for the whole panel? Oh, all right, so we're going to leap over a bunch of questions. I'm just going to go straight for what is the next step for each of you. So tell us how you're going to use the next period of time in your lives 
to advance the goals of C3E? What's, your, what's the major thing you want to try to accomplish? And what would you leave us with as a message in terms of how we can help and support you? I'll start at the end. Well, um, I got into public service because I'm very concerned about climate change, and I have two and a half years left in my term. And so what I'm committed to doing the rest of my term is promoting California's clean energy policies. Specifically, I want to see transportation electrification um, advance during my term, as well as uh, my work on energy storage. And you can support me by, if you're a uh, scientist doing fabulous research and bringing the cost down to these technologies, if you work with uh, consumer groups and members of the public, getting them excited about these technologies and letting them know that the future is here now. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> yes. So I'm a teacher. Uh, and as a teacher, my job now is to empower teachers to do a better job of teaching science, technology, engineering, and math. And I just want to say how excited I am that the Department of Energy has funded the C3E International Teacher Workshop. So we have teachers, if you could stand up if you're here for the workshop, I think that would be great. I encourage you to say hello to the teachers that are visiting from uh, Canada and Russia and Denmark and Mexico Welcome. and the US. Um, and, and as teachers are, some of them are a little shy, so I encourage you to go up and say hello to them and introduce yourselves. But on my, um, my commitment is to continue to empower teachers. So we do a lot of professional development around lots of different subjects, but in particular energy. So uh, we, we have this amazing institute this summer that will be teaching a strand on what called Water Energy World, which is a partnership with Arizona Project WET. So water and energy are inherently connected and um, learning those systems and becoming energy literate for teachers first and then for our students is, um, is what I'm committed to helping with. And on, on your part, um, of course, funding for anything related to education is critical. Um, so uh, grants that help um, educators bring these topics into the classroom are important. Um, you might know that education, particularly in Arizona, is not well funded. So we are committed to running workshops where teachers get the resources that they need in order to engage their students. Um, and that, so supporting those efforts is important. Thank you, Danelle. Uh, Kristen. Uh, so my full-time job is as the executive director of Women of Wind Energy. So my every day, all the time, wake up in the middle of the night is in line with the mission of C3E. Um, and I do it because I fundamentally believe that having more women in this sector is critical to the success of the sector. If we're going to address the challenges that are out there, we need as many diverse minds, ideas, talents, backgrounds in, it, in the game, ready to go, working on all the challenges and puzzles as we can. So I'm committed to that every day, and I think it happens at every level. So energy sector around the world still has the lowest percentage of women on boards, and we were talking about women in leadership. I think that happens at every stage of the pipeline if we want to have women on boards. And that happens in governments as well. Energy, um, we know that countries uh, that have more women in their legislatures are more likely to pass uh, environmental uh, conservation programs and things like that. So it's also, you know, it's not only the boards of our companies, it's our governments. Um, and all of this is kind of happening along the way. And to me, it's also, you know, I just heard the other day at the U.S. level, wind technician is the fastest growing job in the United States, period, as an entire thing. Unfortunately, what I also know from research in the wind industry is that that field is one of the lowest in terms of where women are participating in the wind sector. So there are all different levels that have to be addressed, and I think it begins at young ages, um, whether it's K through 12 or even early childhood education. There's amazing, you were talking about the mindset piece and this idea of struggle, um, and that's an incredibly important thing to help especially young girls understand from a very, very early age. And then how we as an entire community can raise our collective voices, right? Because I am committed to making these changes in all these different places, but there are gaps all along the way and we all have to be out there finding them. I was telling another story, I was at the Society of Women Engineers National Conference um, last fall. And I sat on a women of five women on a, um, it was a sustainability, women in sustainability panel. 
and the, you know, it was a ballroom in a convention center packed. And at the end, each of us as panelists had a line of people across the room to ask questions. And again and again and again, each of the students that came up, and they were almost all college or grad students, said, oh my god, I have wanted to be in this sector. I went into engineering because I want to work in sustainability and I want to work in renewable energy. I want to be in this field and I can't find it. I don't understand where the companies are. I don't understand how to get my foot in the door. So we need to be kind of as on the ball as we can be about where every single gap is along the way and recognizing that by being in this room, we already have access to so much more information. And the more that we can help tap all of those little gaps and bring all our voices together, the more we can change the whole thing. And we have to do it fast. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Yeah. And <laughs> last word for Anya. Um, so what's next up for me personally is focused on bringing another baby girl into this world and hopefully um, educating her to be able to grow up to be a leader in any field that she sees herself fit to be. Um, and for our organization, Empower Generation, we are continuing to grow as the largest grassroots last mile distribution network um, of 18 women-led businesses, and we hope to get to 100 in Nepal by the end of the next two years. We're also trying to replicate our program in other developing countries in Asia, like Burma um, and Northern India. And um, we are launching later this year the first ever pay-as-you-go solar home solution for rural communities and households um, in Nepal um, using mobile money as well. So in terms of how you can help, Definitely, we are looking for funding to continue to expand our distribution network, as well as we are looking for angel investors for our first round for the pay-as-you-go um, company. And uh, we are also looking for ambassadors, as well as fellows. Um, I met my fellow, current fellow, Hannah, who's here right now at C3 last year. So please come talk to me if you're interested in joining the clean energy revolution with us. Fantastic. Please join me in thanking these extraordinary women, Kristen, Carla, Janelle, Anya, thank you.